How important was the mental side of your game in your golf journey? And have you had struggles over time? Has it evolved over time? Yeah, I mean, the mental side of golf, a lot of people don't realize. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really tough. It's, you know, a game that you want to quit half the time you go out and play. And, you know, the toughest, the toughest players are the ones who survive and, and shoot the lowest scores. And, you know, I kind of started realizing how important it was in high school. Uh, but, you know, I still gotten you know slumps uh, where I quit believing in myself you know I'd hit some bad shots and you know I just want to go to the range and work on it and be done playing but you know the more that I was around you know really good players and really tough players and, you know I had a great coach at college coach small who kind of instilled in me how how important the mental side was to be you know mentally tougher than than anyone else and you know if you're the mentally toughest person at your tournament um, you know, obviously, physical, physical wise, things are going to go wrong. You're not going to hit perfect shots like you want to every time. But it's it's how you get over it. It's how you overcome adversity on the golf course. And you know, I kind of bought into that. I met with Bob Rotella a couple times, and you know, I, I just try to pick apart the the brains of really good players and you know psychologists like him, and you know, learn as much as I could. And you know, I'm still working. I'm definitely not near perfect. I feel like every time I go out to a tournament, I learn more and more. And, you know, I just have something written down with my goals about, you know, how I want to be. I want to be kind of, you know, relentless out on the golf course. I, I want to, you know, be totally committed and totally confident over every shot. And, you know, I'd say I probably go out on, in a tournament and I'm probably 80% of the time I'm confident. And I'd say the best players in the world are 90, 95. And, you know, when they're playing their best, close to 100. And so that's obviously something I need to work on. And, you know, a lot of younger kids, I would just say, you know, golf is a game of your next shot. And, you know, regardless of what happened before, uh, how you hit your tee shot, if you hit three hooks in a row, don't go trying to, f trying to fix your hook and worrying about your swing, and, you know, trying to hit it out to the right to avoid hooking it. You know, just go and see your target and, you know, believe in yourself that you're going to hit it at your target. And, you know, that's the best advice that I could give to you. Yeah, I mean, growing up, uh, I struggled with it a little bit. Um, not so much not believing in myself, but kind of my actions out on the course. Um, sometimes I got mad and it wasn't just because I didn't believe in myself. I just sometimes I thought, like other my playing part, our partners or college coaches or my coach um, I just wanted to show them that I wasn't really like that bad or something like that and um, so I kind of grew up and, and realized that obviously that's not the way you want to handle yourself out on the golf course because you never know who's watching um, you know there could be college coaches out there watching you or they could be other coaches out there and um, they kind of base if, if they've seen you hit one shot and you you do something bad, you hit a tee mark or something like that, they kind of and they walk away. They base their whole view of you on just that one shot, one time. They didn't even talk to you, and they kind of feel like they think you're um, kind of a hothead or whatever or whatever you want to call it. But you just never know who's watching, and I think that was one of the most important things that I got uh, taught when I was growing up. And uh, I did it. I learned my lesson in college. Um, I had my coach walking with me, and I remain, remember it plain as day. I I hit the ball, um, and I, I hit it to the to the right, and I ended up smacking the the tee marker, and it was metal, so it made a lot of noise. And um, my coach was not very happy, to say the least, and um, he ended up yelling at me pretty bad. And uh, I kind of learned my lesson to to never do that again because, you know, that's just showing you that there's signs of weakness in you and um, that's just not something that you want to display to, to other people. So that's something that I've learned up and grown up um, a ton and playing out uh, my rest of my college career and um, this past summer on um, some professional tour events, um, you just see guys handle themselves. They, they might get mad, but they handle themselves um, very well and you never you rarely see something like that happen and um, it's just kind of cool to grow up and maybe you don't realize it at a young age that um, that affects uh, 
how others may view you, but um, as you grow up, you can see that for sure. So. so I'm curious if you guys have been exposed to like monitoring your self-talk, and then if, if it's negative, if you have any tips or um, practices, processes, th things that you go through to uh, change your self-talk as you're playing or even beforehand. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've had negative self-talk plenty of times. I would say it's almost more in practice than it is playing. And you know, I've had my coach around, and you know, he can just see how hard I am on myself. And you know, I just want to keep hitting balls and keep being perfect. And you know, the more the more I rush, the wor the worse I hit, and you know, the the more negative I get. And he'll tell me uh, to go one, go take a break. You know, don't don't hit anymore. And then he'll tell me. You know, to go to go home that night, look yourself in the mirror, or go into a dark spot, and talk to yourself, and tell you, tell yourself, you know, that you're in control of how you think, you're in control of, you know, how you feel, all of that. And he'll tell me to to believe in myself, you know, to picture great things to come, you know, to picture me holding up trophies, to picture, uh, you know, me having success. And I can tell you one thing is that. You're a lot better off doing that, as weird as that sounds. You're a lot better off doing that um, and reaching your dreams, it, you know, than just to continue negative self-talk. And we all we all fall victim to it, and you know, it's really tough to get out of. But you know, the more you can turn it around into to positive stuff, and you know, believe in yourself, and you know, start seeing success, start seeing yourself lifting up trophies. You know, the better it's going to get. And I can remember I was. You know, I was playing some terrible golf uh, in February this year, and uh, I, w I was picked to go down uh, to try uh, a qualifier for a PGA tournament. And you know, Coach Small was playing with me and in some practice rounds, and you know, he was beating me by five shots. And you know, I just I talked to myself that night uh, before the qualifier. My game, you know, was very rusty, and I was just going to tell myself that I didn't care how I hit it. I didn't care. Um, you know how I felt about my game. I was just going to go out there and I was going to win the qualifier. And you know whether I did win or whether I didn't win, you know that's not really important. But the fact that I was able, you know, to turn that around um, and to have him there to, to tell me that stuff, uh, I ended up winning the qualifier. And um, you know that never would have happened if I didn't talk to myself that night. I can guarantee that. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Younger players maybe don't always buy buy into like the visualization part of things. They think that you know practice yeah. is how things are going to get yeah. better. Um, do you guys use any visualization techniques that you could share with younger players or even older players too? I guess. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead. I was pretty fascinated with kind of how Jason Day really burst on the scene as probably the best, obviously the best golfer he's been playing, uh, some of the best golf anybody's ever seen in the world this past year or so, and um, one of the, the things that noticed that I noticed when he was playing was kind of the, his visualization kind of before a shot, and I think that's big. Um, one of the things that I've kind of looked into what he does is he does a lot of meditating, and um, a lot of times, like I, I've read a couple of stuff, you know, a couple articles, kind of what he does. But a lot of times, when he either wakes up or when he's going to bed, he'll he'll spend five five ten minutes just kind of laying in bed or or sitting up and just visualizing what he wants to see and, and trying to just quiet his mind from everything else in the world, um, what may happen if you had a rough day on the course or whatever. Just try to visualize that everything's calm and kind of just throw everything aside and um, just make sure you have a clean clear mind and that's kind of when you're able to when your your mind works the best obviously and you're able to take stuff from past experiences that that you've maybe thought of that um, you're in the correct state of mind you're really focused you can take that stuff and, and hone it in and, and really easily remember that kind of stuff and and hopefully do that um, for several nights in a row and you can really see you can see a change in kind of how you see yourself out on the practice screen how you see yourself out on the course yeah definitely i agree with that like long-term visualization uh short term but also uh, you see jason you know before he hits a golf shot 
he's he's you know very deliberate in his routine and he'll sit back and close his eyes and picture that golf shot how he wants it and he will not go hit that shot until he totally sees it in his mind and believes that he can hit it and uh, you know it's not always going to work you know you see him hit bad shots but you know more times than not that'll save you a couple shots if you stick with it through an entire round and and you know not go up and, and hit that shot until you completely see it in your mind.